Welcome to another day in the matrix of waters above cryptos above crypto. Happy new sending you all lots of love and hope you're having an incredible week so far. Over the past week, I had a lot of people reaching out, showing interest in my upcoming expansion mastermind. It'll be my first non-crypto course that'll be focused around my knowledge and the subjects that we speak about on my Friday live streams. So if you haven't tuned into a live stream yet, I'll be doing one tomorrow, Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Looking forward to hanging out with the Wolf Pack. And I'm really excited to share this new course with the world. And more importantly, I am so grateful to hear so many wolves out there are looking forward to this new release. So I just wanted to say I appreciate every single one of you. This new course will be released next month on September 1st alongside a new group coaching Patreon membership. So for anyone who signs up to become a group coaching member, you'll get this new expansion mastermind course for free included in that membership. And I'll continue to update everyone on that as we get closer to the end of August. So in today's video, we'll be recapping what I shared in my last YouTube video. I had conviction and bullish energy leading into today, since it was the new moon, and we had some significant gematria and numerology connections for today. I'll also be sharing a new date that is coming soon that I'm keeping my eye on, and we'll wrap up this video with some technical analysis on the crypto market. This current week we're in is actually very important for the charts since we have several macro candle closes to finish off this month of July. So if you're new here, we do cryptocurrency technical analysis and combine it with gematria, numerology, and astrology to understand these markets. Feel free to subscribe and turn on the bell notification to stay updated on when new videos come out. And make sure to give this video a like and share this channel with other conscious beings to help grow our community. And for those of you that want to learn how to do technical analysis and combine it with gematria, you can join my mastermind course. The link to my website can be found in the description box of this video and in the pinned comment below for access to the mastermind course. And with that being said, let's take the red pill. So most of you are probably already aware that today is the date of the new moon, July 28th. It's the new moon in Leo. And we've actually talked about this in my last couple of YouTube videos as we prepared for the monthly close of July, moving into August. And actually, in my last Patreon Red Pill podcast that I released over the weekend, I was talking about how I was actually anticipating this bearish energy that we saw up until two days ago to be baked into the market leading into the FOMC meeting. So that's actually exactly the way that it played out. So it was really beautiful to see how that all came to fruition. Essentially, we moved up into that critical date of the 19th and 20th of July, which I made videos on before that date even came to pass. We saw what happened market in regards to Bitcoin and the overall energy seemed to top out around that time frame. Then we had multiple days of just red in the market. And this red was being baked in prematurely leading into this Federal Reserve meeting, which happened yesterday. So this is a classic setup. We saw Bitcoin have a pure reversal, 8% candle yesterday, and today we're actually continuing. And I'm going to get into the technical analysis in a moment, but I just want to go over some of the key dates and some of the key gematria and numerology connections we have coming up. So, so far, this was beautiful to see. We knew that July 28th, which is today, actually had a connection to the upcoming Rosh Hashanah, the Hebrew New Year, which will be the end of the Shemitah. And that is, it shares the same date numerology. So with the way that I prioritize my date numerology with the double digit numerology, and you could see we got that 77. And the same thing goes for Rosh Hashanah, Hebrew New Year, 77. And then down here is the standard date numerology before reduction. And you have that 23 matching the 23. So this was beautiful to watch come to pass. A couple more connections we can share. And also this 23 number is huge in cryptocurrency because Bitcoin and Chaldean equals that 23. And you can see that right there. And 23 is the ninth prime number. So that ninth prime connection is very, very big because the number nine is very important in numerology. It's the number for spatial infinity. If you consider zero is nothing, the number nine is everything. OK, so breaking this down a little bit further, today is Thursday or Jueves, which is the day of Jupiter. And Jupiter actually has all the connections to new moon. And today, of course, is the new moon. But let me just show you this really quickly with the word Jupiter. Again, today's Thursday. 
or Thor's day, the day of Jupiter. You have 99, 36, 90, 45. You even have that 27. You can press enter and then you just type in new moon and you're going to see they're all connecting. Uh, there's only one discrepancy, but for the most part in the key ciphers that I like to use, sticking to these four base ciphers in the Chaldean, you can see those 99s, 36s, and 90s matching up in the same ciphers. Okay, so that's what you want to look out for when you're doing gematria. When you're cross-referencing different ciphers with different numbers, uh, it starts to get convoluted and it doesn't necessarily have any utility anymore. I mean, it's fine uh, when you're getting started, but it's much better to build a solid base foundation and just keep it to the cipher itself. So when you're seeing the 99s match in that same English ordinal cipher, that's going to be a lot more powerful than seeing a 99 here and then a 99 in the other word in the reverse full reduction so if we were doing hebrew gematria or even different forms of isopsophy which is greek numerology then yeah you could get a little bit more fancy with that because those languages actually have a lot more power to them but the english language is a different is a different beast okay so i'm just sharing that with people because i know a lot of new people are showing up in my work we have been growing quite a bit over the past couple months and i want people to learn gematria the right way so pay attention to all these little lessons and tips that I share when I'm doing these decodes for you guys. Now, we can also type in New Moon Leo, and we're, tr we're in Tropical Leo right now. I mean, in sidereal astrology, we're actually still in Cancer until August 15th, so I'll get to that in a moment. But this connection here, New Moon Leo, and we have it the 131, which is the 32nd prime number. And that 32 actually still shows up in the same cipher, in the English ordinal cipher in Leo, okay? Leo the lion. So this connection here with Leo is definitely important. I believe I shared it in my last YouTube video, but just the recap is Leo equaling 15 in Chaldean. And in that same cipher, we have Tiger equaling 15. And some people might be wondering, like, why does that matter? Well, because we're actually in the Chinese year of the tiger. OK, and if you go back to my videos from February, where we actually were able to kind of predict the Super Bowl, the way that it went, we were able to determine utilizing Gamatra numerology that the Rams would win. And again, this was all in that time frame of the Ukraine Russia invasion. And there was a lot of symbology here and it was all coming back to the tiger. Now, the tiger esoterically is actually Jupiter and that eye of the tiger, you guys have probably heard that quote before, that great red spot or eye of the tiger is Mars, okay? And when you start to learn more about the luminaries, they're not planets, <laughs> when you learn more about the luminaries, you learn that these are toroidal fields and these toroidal fields stack within each other like a Russian doll, okay? To know the universe, you must know thyself. As above, so below, as within, so without. So this connection here uh, with the 15 is definitely something important. Anyone who watches Donut Factory's work, and shout out to my brother Alex, Donut Factory, he talks about the number 15 and the number 51 all the time. So because we're in the year of the tiger and we have that 15 in Chaldean, it's been the whole year has been a lot of financial chaos, and we've been watching that unfold. So like I said moments ago, we're actually in sidereal zodiac and sidereal astrology. We're still in cancer, okay? We're going to be in cancer until August 15th, according to sidereal, right? Which is actually around the next full moon of August. So I'm going to go over here, and you're going to see that the next full moon is going to be August 11th. So that's within my window of time. And I teach you guys this in almost every video. I like to consider that the five days before or five days after a new moon or a full moon is either going to be the bullish energy for the new moon or the more bearish energy for the full moon okay so this tells me that there's definitely a connection here and the more you start to combine not only the tropical but sidereal and even if you want to consider vedic astrology it actually helps you it just helps you round out all of what's going on here you develop a, a strong gnosis so another thing is the sign ruler of cancer is actually the moon all right. And when we were talking moments ago about the number 15 and 51, we know moon has that 15 and 51. It is money or moon eye. All right. The money. Right. And this whole connection to the 22 in Chaldean is massive because we're in the, the Hebrew year of 5782, which reduces down to the 22s. We're in the Gregorian year of the 22. This is all tied back. 
and it's a powerful year for money. Another connection here is that 72 in money and in the same cipher, Bitcoin equaling 72 or the digital money, the programmable money, right? And that's not about debate. I'm not here to debate anyone on their opinions of blockchain or any of that. Anyone who's been following my work knows where I stand on blockchain technology and what its implementations will be for the future and how we are supposed to take advantage of it so that it doesn't take advantage of us. Okay. Remember I said that. So one of the other connections there with Moon being the 23 in Chaldean, and that also tying back to Bitcoin as well. So this is definitely important as we're in Cancer and that sign ruler being the Moon. And for those uh, people who are more interested in the esoteric information, Cancer is the gateway of man. OK, so that Moon 23 standard date numerology, Bitcoin 23 or sorry, Bitcoin and the Moon giving you the 23 in Chaldean. And then today, giving you that 23 standard date numerology, which connects us to the end of Rosh, of Rosh Hashanah, the end of the Shemitah. So one other connection to be made here is the upcoming Monday, which is going to be August 2nd. And this leads in, or sorry, August 1st, which leads into the, the next key date that I'm about to share with you guys. August 1st is a Monday, which is the day of the moon, lunes or luna. And then you have the date numerologies giving you 51 and also 15. OK, like I was just showing you before with the moon, 51 and 15. All right. So this date is going to be very important because August 1st is the monthly open for all the charts. So essentially we move into that new month and the day before being the monthly close, that energy around that 48 hours is, is always kind of volatile. It's something to keep, keep in mind. Okay. And with that being said, the day before being a Sunday, that means crypto is going to be the only thing trading up until about five, 6 PM Eastern standard time. And then Chicago mercantile exchange will open up the Forex will open up and the Dow Jones will open up. So that is another sign that as we transition through our monthly close into the monthly open, it's probably going to be a pretty volatile day. So this is what I really wanted to share with you guys regarding a, a, a key date to look forward to. And it's esoteric. OK, I'm adding in things that aren't as obvious, but I believe will be very profound. So Tuesday, August 2nd, which Believe it or not, I know some people are kind of confused here when I share some of these exact dates because you know that the following date or the time window for the people living in Australia and, and New Zealand, it's a, a day off. So for any of my Aussie and <laughs> New Zealand wolves out there, just remember, if I'm talking about the date of the second, then you just consider it off of the first for you. OK, but this market operates in Eastern Standard Time, New York or Washington, D.C. time zone. End of story. So if you're somebody who lives outside of that time zone and you're really interested in this market and you want to know how it operates, just save the Eastern time zone and compare it to my videos. So whenever I'm talking about dates and time and all of that, it's always about Eastern Standard Time. OK, that is where the market, the global markets operate out of. That's it. And, you know, that debate, I mean, it, it really needs to end sooner than later because a lot of people believe it's Israel or they believe it's Switzerland and they have nothing to back that up. The stock, the New York Stock Exchange is what runs the energy of the market. So this date is a date that I'm paying attention to because it is 55 days until the end of the Shemitah. All right. And this number 55, we've been keeping track of all year since we had Pluto's return in the United States. And I probably went over this in a lot of my videos. So just a quick recap. We've had Pluto's return in the United States of America. And again, remember what I just said before about how New York or Eastern Standard Time runs the market? Well, we've just had Pluto's return in the United States. This is very big. OK, because Pluto tied to Hades, dealing with precious metals and true wealth, unlike Mercury, Mercury dealing with fake artificial wealth like fiat money and commerce and merchandise. Pluto is the real deal when it comes to money. All right. So this is something to take into consideration. And that 55 also matching with the Platinum Jubilee. And I've been telling everyone how I am looking to the end of this Hebrew year or the, the 27th into 28th of September to be the start of biblical jubilee. OK, the 50 year cycle or the 49 year cycle, seven cycles of seven. OK, so this platinum jubilee connection right there with the 55, just like I was talking about. And this is the anniversary, the 70th anniversary of Queen Elizabeth. And that's the platinum jubilee giving you that 55 connection right there. OK. 
This is really important stuff. And it's interesting how on Platinum Ju or sorry, Platinum Jubilee and Queen Elizabeth giving you that 69 and are, you know, within that big window of time for that Hebrew year, we had Bitcoin hit an all-time high of 69,000 and we know Saturn equals 69 in in one of the key ciphers as well. So that 69, we were talking about it in my last video, tying it back to Cancer because that's the zodiac logo of of Cancer, the crab. It's that 69. It's all about balance. It's all about neutrality, right? And that is why it's the gateway of man. <laughs> so these 55s also come back to Satoshi Nakamoto. And if it deals with Satoshi Nakamoto, then it deals with the entire cryptocurrency market because Satoshi, this is the timekeeper of crypto, the one who devised the public blockchain database. He is Saturn, okay? And we're in the year of the Shemitah, and the Shemitah year is the Saturn year. And this is the year that Saturn comes to harvest, okay? Sa Saturn being the god of harvest, all right? And that is why we are probably hearing all of these narratives over the past year about food shortages, okay? Because that is all going back to the Shemitah. So the Shemitah is very multifaceted. I've been having a lot of people ask me about, you know, just all the machinations of the Shemitah or the sabbatical year. And I've been trying to let them know it's not just all about finances. This is very deep. It has to deal with every aspect of our of our world, because if it comes back to money, then it comes back to energy or currency. And if it comes back to currency, then it's everything, because as Nikola Tesla says, it's all about vibrational frequency. It's all about energy. And that's why they design money the way that they do, where it's infinitely printable and it's controlled by government, because that's the way the world works. That's the way it's always worked, right? Government literally means governare menti or governare mentis, which means mind control. They don't have any product to sell you besides fiat money. And that all ties back to Mercury. Right. So the more you learn about your mythologies, the, the more you learn about this market from the mythological perspective and you tie it into that, you're going to see why the world operates the way it does in regards to legislature, money, etc. And Mercury giving us that 23 in Chaldean. OK, that 23 ninth prime spatial infinity, the number of everything, the controller of the mortals, because <laughs> if you control the mortals currency, you control them. Now, one last connection to make about this specific date of August 2nd is it will be the day leaving 151 days in the year. That 151 is important because 151 is the 36th prime number. Now, that 36 ties us back to not only Bitcoin in the full reduction cipher, but also Ethereum and Ethereum in a more key cipher, the Chaldean. <clears throat> It's big. So we're seeing in the top two cryptocurrencies where majority of the market cap of the entire cryptocurrency market is with these two connections to the number 36 and that being 151 days left on this exact date. So I could get, keep going. You know, one last thing I'll share with you guys is something interesting that I found regarding this number 151. When you go over to the periodic table, you're going to see europium, which is 151 atomic mass and that is the 63rd element <laughs> which is the mirror of the number 36 so remember 151 is the 36th prime number and how interesting is it that europium has 151 atomic mass and being the 63rd element and shout out to my brother logan decode your reality um, for utilizing the periodic table in a way that i've never seen before definitely influenced me to start utilizing it in my work so appreciate him and also you notice that this is the logo of the euro the euro dollar and if you flip this if you just rotate the euro dollar you're gonna see uh, the trident of Poseidon, okay, so or Neptune, right? And that's a that's a mythology, and you start seeing that there's these mythological symbology, you know, connections that we can make here. But Europe is the next to get sacrificed, and I've been saying that for a while now. And a lot of people believe it's the United States of America, and I I'll talk about that in another video. But Europe is in its process right now, and for anyone who's there right now, I mean, it's been pretty obvious over the past two years the way it's headed. So when we hear about new changes in implementation regarding the World Economic Forum or any of these globalist socialist regimes, it's going to happen in Europe way before it happens in the United States of America or Canada. And Canada, it could happen on the border, of course, because that's where a majority of the population goes. But most of Canada is like the wild, wild west. 
And Europe is 100% controllable. It is so easy to implement change and to control every single aspect of it. The one thing that the Europeans have on their in their favor is they riot, is they they you know they create chaos when they need to, and that's not necessarily a good thing, but it's just the way they act. You know, in, in France, if they raise the retirement age by two years, they're out in the streets throwing Molotov cocktails. It's very interesting. In America, people just, they just complain, you know, over Facebook and keep it moving. So we're watching a lot of change in the world. And this euro dollar system, when they implemented that, however many years ago, we're going to start seeing that implementation happen with CBDCs or government issued stable coins. And it's going to be playing itself throughout. And I believe Europe will be an easy test ground because of what they've done in the past with restructuring their financial system. So keep that in mind. But uh, that little 151 and 63 was just something I wanted to throw in there for you decoders out there that are more interested in that kind of stuff. So Let's get into the charts. We went over so many things with uh, <laughs> the Gamatria, and it's really fun to, to teach everyone about that stuff. So quickly, we have this Firmament Dome, and this is a dome that I've been looking at for a while. Again, this is very experimental technical analysis, but you can see this dome formed. I have it from the start of the C word crash. So that was the start of the pandemic back in March of 2020. We could see all this resistance along the starting point, probably about 100 days, and then sideways breakout and we have these three all-time highs in a row being the rejection points exactly on this firmament then within the all-time the current all-time high now we see all of these rejections on the other side of it another huge rejection here which led to a dump into the current trading range which is essentially back testing this little stall out point before bitcoin hit to 40k for the first time now what's really interesting about this is this might be one of the first times since this firmament dome has started that we're actually starting to break out of it and when you zoom when i zoom into this it's nobody can argue the accuracy of this firmament arc that i drew so you can just see how incredible these rejections have been over the past week i mean when we're analyzing this from a local perspective hard to argue so again this is more experimental technical analysis and the fact that we've broken out of the firmament doesn't mean that we can't eventually come and back test the outside of it in the future so keep what i just said in mind so this is very interesting and now if i was to remove all of this we also see a couple other things we have this horizontal trading range if you just pay attention to these two yellow lines we had a neckline here of this attempted w which became an m with a false m that led to another w with a bullish breakout so we actually started discussing this w right here and let me just draw it out if this is confusing people but it's right there <clears throat> Now we have this neckline. Once you break out of a neckline, you actually typically come in and back test it. So this back test that we had was textbook. It needed to happen. It even sunk a little bit lower, which is nice because it came in and back tested these lower levels right here. And for anyone who's over in our Patreon in the Trading Wolves membership, we did a meeting two days ago and I facilitated that meeting alongside our mods. So shout out to our mods and anyone who joined. I appreciate you guys. Looking forward to future meetings on Trading Wolves. But Anywho, I discussed that this was a key level to hold and we actually came and back tested it perfectly into the day before the FOMC meeting. Now, since breaking out and breaking out not only of this neckline, what I would like to see for a clean W and a measured move of continuation would be closing dailies above this level right here. So the daily close resistance coming in around 23.3 and ideally into 24K. So if we were to close a daily tonight at 24 4,000, that would essentially lead you to the next measured move. And you could do this very conservatively off of a off of a log or, or sorry, a linear chart, not a log chart. And it's going to come up somewhere around 26. That would be like the more conservative level. And if you wanted to really stretch things out, you're coming into about 27.4. So what I was looking at before was a logarithmic chart. And I switched it back to a linear chart when I wanted to show you guys the measured move. Okay. That's important that you do that because when you start switching between linear and log, when you're doing measured moves, it's really going to give you a lot of like, you know, complicated data and you just want to simplify simplify your process here. So tomorrow's close is actually very important because tomorrow's close is going to be a five day candle. And let me turn off all these moving everything, just show you guys what's going on here. Tomorrow's close is a five day, a three day, 
and a two days a two day candle close. So getting anything above twenty three thousand five hundred on tomorrow's close would be another continuation candle on the five day. It would be a continuation on the three day, and it would essentially be a continuation on the two day. So anything above this level right here, this horizontal uh, resistance that could potentially now be a, a, a confirmed breakout. You know, this is a bullish sign. I'm trying to be very, you know, analytical here and show you guys that technical analysis is not about opinions or emotions. It's about looking at the charts, okay? <clears throat> so now that we've had this uh, premature breakout, it's not it's not over yet, okay? We need to see how tonight's close goes. Getting above 24 would be ideal. Then we need to see ultimately how tomorrow's close goes because we have the five-day, three-day, and two-day closure. So let me look really quickly at this uh, index chart because there might be some more things that we can analyze. Okay, here we go. So now I'm looking at the daily chart right here, and you could see this is actually a bear flag pattern. And this bear flag actually aligns perfectly. Let me put this back in logarithmic. Let me extend this out, and you're going to see what's going on here. So ever since around the 30th of March, we've actually had this downsloping resistance trend line, and it's been a clean rejection point thus far. Up until today, we actually finally broke above that, but we could see here that we are in a, uh, I would call this a micro bull flag. So here is the flag uh, pole, and here is the flag itself, and we could see it is essentially breaking down into this uptrend. And this uptrend has clean resistance points and clean support points showing a clean bear flag. Now, this bear flag would give us a bias that would actually break the current local lows, and it would bring us into those levels that I discussed for potentially October and November, which would be a sub $17,000 Bitcoin somewhere into 13K. Now, if that was to play out, that would definitely be interesting um, regarding if it, would, if it was to happen soon, because typically we see our biggest lows leading into Q4. We don't see our worst lows where we're at right now. That's historical data. So we're going to see a Bitcoin below 17K. It would be historically more likely to happen into October, November, December. Not right now. So what I'm trying to say here is even though we have this bear flag pattern, I'm not convinced that this is something to really worry about. But if we're going to get multiple rejections on this, uh, well, then you can't be, you know, you can't be like emotional about it. Ultimately, it would be if you start breaking structure. So that would mean a lower uh, low in the structure. We have low, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. Once you start breaking trend, well, that's a, that's a wrap. That's when you would have this bear flag pattern come to fruition. So I'm just showing you both biases, showing you that there's not really a bias here. Ultimately, it should be that Bitcoin has relief between now and late September or, you know, maybe mid September. And then after Rosh Hashanah, that's when we get the big push to the downside. So with that being said, I'm going to share some levels with you guys, and then we're going to move on to Ethereum and XRP very quickly. So essentially, if we were to get today's close where we're at now, there is thin air up until 28K, regardless of the measured moves and regardless of everything I showed you. So I'm going to hide everything and just show you based on the candles. With today's daily close, we should essentially be moving up into around 30K. That would be because there's thin air between these levels or this cluster of trading and this drop. Okay, that's a very simple TA. Once we get a uh, continuation and multiple higher highs, that's typically a time where we uh, anticipate a volatile breakout. If you were to pull up the Bollinger Bands, you also see that the Bollinger Bands were constricting a lot in this area right here as well. So that all adds up to if this is going to continue bullish up until maybe the five day window after the new moon, which would be sometime into like the third or fourth of August. Um, it would maybe potentially hit us into 27 or 28K Bitcoin. And then the new moon of August could potentially be the 30K Bitcoin. And we'll get to that when that time comes. Now, on the downside, if we were to start closing dailies below 20,800, then I would anticipate a swipe down to 19K again. Okay, so keep that in mind with the analysis I'm about to share with Ethereum and uh, XRP. Now, you're going to see something very interesting here with XRP or with Ethereum, excuse me. Remember this horizontal trading range that I just went over with Bitcoin? Well, we are already coming up into that horizontal trading range with ETH right now. Okay, so this is a clean, uh, what should be a short-term resistance. Breaking just through this would have to deal with how Bitcoin reacts, of course. So this range comes into about 2,000 flat, and 2,000 is going to be a psychological resistance level for ETH. 
And if you look at this uh, chart right here, you're going to see that we're actually breaking into that support at the bottom. And the 888 is a very critical level to get gravitated back to after we have a substantial dump to the downside. And this golden pocket could be an opportunity for a retest as well. Meaning we could see a $2,100 to $2,200 Ethereum one last time before this rolls over. And we could obviously go higher. But I was thinking how hilarious it would be if Ethereum hits around $2,222 before the Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> Just those twos and how important the twos have been this whole year. Um, I, I think it would be hilarious. Um, and that would technically align because it's only within a couple dollars from some of the technical levels I just shared with you. So that's your upside. Your upside is the 888 FIB. And then on the downside, it would be essentially back testing what looked like a bear flag that eventually got a bullish breakout. And it was this W pattern right here. So let me just show you how clean this W breakout was. I'm going to go off of this wick right here down to this wick below, and then I'm going to put it on top of this. And you're going to see literally, look at where it measures to. It measures to the exact dollar amount that we're playing at right now. So it's within this cluster, and that's how these Ws uh, come to fruition. We saw this rejection line right here. There was clearly a sell wall somewhere around 1600 ETH, and today that's been confirmed on a breakout. Look at this back test. I mean, you can't get much better than... <laughs> This is amazing, you know, bullish W breakout gets extended, comes to back test right at the top of the prior resistance and then continuation. That's a very clean uh, pattern. So ETH is usually not that clean. ETH is usually really choppy and weird, um, but lately ETH has been super easy to do TA on. So XRP final notes before this video gets a little bit too long is we are just chopping around really noticeably chopping <clears throat> chopping around in these levels. And if I put this on a log chart, you're going to see that we actually have a lot of room to go up until this white trend line, which has been a down sloping resistance since back in one dollar ninety cent XRP in April. So there is opportunity for there to be that one last push up for XRP. And you guys know XRP is very explosive where like it'll just randomly pop off. And it's better to be positioned before those moments come. And when those moments do come, and if you were not positioned, do not FOMO. This is the stupidest coin to FOMO in as it's in a breakout because it creates these Bart Simpson heads and just always uh, enters distribution shortly after. So I don't want to be super complicated with this, but don't try to get into XRP on breakouts. It's always stupid. It's not the coin to do that on. Uh, it doesn't behave on TA like a lot of other projects do. This coin has very unorthodox uh, behavior. And if you're really good at technical analysis, you really know what you're doing, then, you know, it's fine. But if you're very new to this game, this is like an accumulation project that is not a project you trade. So with what's been going on here lately, there's really nothing to say until we actually concretely close above 39, 38 I would call it 39 cents. So maybe tomorrow we get a 38, 39 cent XRP, and that would confirm a, a move up into the next level, which would be around 44 cents. And until that happens, you know, this is just really low volatility and chopping around. So I would love to see Bitcoin close tonight above 24K. I think a close above 24K will give it the juice to move up to maybe that 27, 28K level. That will most likely help Ethereum get closer to 2000. And this could all come to fruition within the next four to five days. But be patient right now, okay, guys? Because this is a very news-driven environment where we could have geopolitical events come out out of nowhere that just make the markets wild. All right. So I want everyone to just, you know, do your best to calmly navigate this. We know about the Shemitah date and we're going to keep you updated every step of the way. So again, just final, I appreciate every single one of you showing your interest in this new upcoming expansion mastermind. I'm really excited to do the group coaching with everyone. It's been overwhelming for me with my time to get private clients and to continue doing my mentoring the way that I used to. So this is a great opportunity for me to open up the group coaching membership and take on a lot of people. I'll be facilitating two Zoom Zoom meetings every week, uh, sorry, two Zoom meetings every month. So that gives me an opportunity to work directly with everyone and to, you know, stay accountable, stay focused. This is really for people that are looking to change their lives, people that are working on something, whether that be emotional or something with their mindset or even with their business, with their relationships, whatever is going on in your life. Like this is what this expansion mastermind is designed for. It's designed for people that are doers, people that are looking to take action, people that are looking to change their situation. So 
I'm really excited to share all that knowledge and wisdom with everyone. Appreciate all your support. And I'll be making a new video to start the new month in a couple days. So I'll be catching you guys next time. Much love.